Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the correlation between high cortisol levels and the accumulation of abdominal or belly fat and some tips for correcting this issue. Weight gain can come in all shapes and sizes. And despite our cultural phobia of gaining weight, the truth of the matter is, not all weight gain is necessarily unhealthy. In fact, there are equally as many health conditions related to weight loss and the inability to put on weight as there are health conditions related to weight gain or particularly fat accumulation. So weight loss is truly about a balance. And even more than that, looking beyond the numbers of the scale, we need to consider the underlying root causes for weight gain and what sort of weight gain we're talking about and dealing with. You see, you can gain weight from an increase in lean muscle mass. There can be an increase of weight on the scale by the retention of water or edema. So water weight is a, another underlying reason that somebody might be gaining weight or pounds on the scale. And then of course, perhaps the more problematic is the accumulation of body fat. And the tricky thing with fat accumulation, particularly around the abdominal region, which is usually an indicator of poor metabolic health and high stress, is not always common in people that are necessarily overweight. Meaning that there are plenty of people that are not necessarily overweight by body mass index score standards, but are still struggling with the accumulation of fat in the body as a symptom of poor metabolic function. In fact, looking at a couple of studies, it's been observed that the accumulation of abdominal fat is often related to worse health including a greater risk of heart disease and diabetes. It's also been found that women with abdominal fat often have more negative moods and higher levels of life stress. So this study alone points out an interesting phenomenon that you've probably seen yourself, which is the concept of being skinny fat, where a person is not necessarily overweight by any means, but they have a great accumulation of body fat and particularly around the abdominal region. And if you look further into the studies and the research, what has been found is that Cortisol, the classic stress hormone secreted under acute stress, chronic stress, and usually under hypothyroidism in a progesterone deficiency, is one of the main culprits for this. Elevated cortisol has actually been found to increase visceral adipose tissue, which is central fat interspread in the abdominal cavity around the organs. And visceral fat is particularly damaging because it actually impairs a variety of metabolic functions and is what is associated with an increased risk for things like heart disease and diabetes. Because again, the accumulation of visceral fat can impair metabolic function overall. It doesn't just lead to a cosmetic issue. In fact, a lot of the times, the elevated cortisol and the accumulation of adipose tissue around the organs can actually impair the cells in the organs ability to uptake glucose and produce energy. And this is one of the key biomarkers or occurrences in a diabetic where the cells actually become incapable of oxidizing glucose. Now where things get tricky is that not all abdominal fat is related to increased visceral fat tissue. There is such a thing as subcutaneous abdominal adipose tissue, which is the accumulation of fat tissue just behind the surface of the skin on the belly and is not necessarily associated with the disease state as much as it is considered a protective mechanism to stress. So think of this more as the body's way of creating a reserve of energy. It stores a little bit of fat to get through a certain period of stress, but it isn't necessarily associated with poor metabolic function. However, it is hypothesized that the central storage of adipose tissue is modified by biological and behavioral responses to stress, such as altered HPA axis activity, sympathetic neural activity, and the consumption of foods high in fat or sugar. The hyperactivity of the HPA axis as a result of increased exposure to circulating levels of cortisol, which is associated with stress, increased appetite, and the mobilization of fat from the peripheral tissues to the central region. And it's also been found that Cushing's disease or hypercortisolism or hyperadrenalism is known to cause the accumulation of abdominal fat stores or abdominal obesity peripheral wasting, and insulin resistance. So translating all of that, it is hyperadrenalism, or the chronic production or elevation of cortisol, which actually mobilizes the peripheral fat tissue and sends it to the central area around the abdominal region surrounding the organs, and that is what is associated with the increased likelihood of insulin resistance and the wasting conditions that you see in things like diabetes. 
So if you've ever observed somebody that has a pretty severe case of diabetes, you'll notice that they generally have a lack of muscle mass in the extremities, in the upper regions and lower regions of the body, but an accumulation of belly fat. And some people might refer to this as a beer belly or again being skinny fat. And the important thing to understand is that this sort of accumulation of belly fat is a sign or symptom of chronically high cortisol, a maladaptive response to stress, and the hyperactivity of the sympathetic nervous system and HPA axis. So in other words, chronic stress and the elevation of cortisol can lead to the accumulation of belly fat, and it's one of the driving forces for the skinny fat physique, and again, the accumulation of belly fat particularly in the abdominals. So if you're somebody that's dealing with stubborn belly fat, particularly if you don't really have much fat around the extremities of your body and it's really just localized in the stomach region, it's probable that your cortisol levels are extremely high. And in fact, there's studies that point out that people with high stress lifestyles tend to have a greater accumulation of the visceral belly fat compared to those who are less stressed. But again, Understand that not all fat accumulation is necessarily an indicator of poor metabolic health. The thing you really want to be concerned of is this sort of condition of just localized belly fat accumulation and almost a wasting condition of the rest of the body. So if you're somebody that's putting on weight pretty much all over and it's evenly distributed, this isn't something I'd necessarily worry about and could be easily corrected with a couple dietary modifications and the right exercise program. But if you are somebody struggling with a beer belly or the skinny fat syndrome or just stubborn belly fat, then I would highly recommend looking into having your cortisol levels checked and probably while you're at it, take a look at the estrogen levels and the functioning of the thyroid because these things are generally all interrelated. And then obviously the tips I would recommend from this point is taking proactive measures to lower that cortisol. Since it is cortisol that's driving the centralization of belly fat or adipose tissue to the abdominal region. So definitely be sure to reference these videos on how to lower cortisol. Otherwise, a couple of tips here and now, I'm going to definitely recommend you look into a couple of herbs that have been clinically proven to lower cortisol. Those herbs being KSM 66 ashwagandha, ginkgo biloba, and cordyceps. These are all fantastic herbs for correcting high cortisol levels. In addition to these herbs, remember that cortisol is regulated by your blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is too low, this can cause an elevation of your cortisol levels. So consuming healthy forms of sugar, ideally in the forms of fruit, can be a great way to shut off the stress response and lower cortisol. And in regards to lifestyle, a lack of sleep is going to cause an elevation of cortisol. So getting adequate sleep and sleeping long enough is going to be essential. And then also anything that's going to stress you psychologically can cause an elevation of cortisol. So learning to cope with stress in a healthy mannerism, learning to be able to face stressful situations without being activated or simulated is going to be essential. So definitely take proactive steps to handle the stress on a psychological level as well. And just generally reduce your lifestyle stressors. So disengage and disconnect from anything that makes you feel miserable, stressed out, and unhappy as much as you can, obviously without creating a new stress. So if your job stresses you out, I'm not going to recommend you quit your job if that's going to create a financial stress. But whenever you can disengage or disconnect from a stressful situation without it creating a new problem, definitely aim to do so. Otherwise, the conclusion of this video is that the accumulation of belly fat, the beer belly appearance, and the skinny fat physique are all often driven by chronically high levels of cortisol. So watching the videos I recommended, supplementing with the herbs I recommended, and implicating some of these lifestyle measures to lower cortisol will be very helpful for flattening the belly and getting rid of some of that belly fat around the abdominal region. However, that does bring this video to a close. So if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new here and want to see more videos just like this. For referencing any of the studies or supplementing with any of the herbs I recommended and talked about in this video, you can find links to those in the description box below. And if you want to learn more about how to lose weight in a healthy way and want more information similar to this in regards to healthy weight loss, be sure to check out our online wellness academy for our healthy weight loss course, which you can enroll in in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.